Duke is going to be our little painting buddy today. He's taking a nap. All right, today we're going to do a, another golf landscape painting tutorial. We're working on an 8 inch by 10 inch canvas panel and we have acrylic paints. Our colors are titanium white, burnt umber, cadmium free red light, portrait pink, yellow oxide, or like a raw sienna type color. This one is Indian yellow. This one is brilliant blue, phthalo blue, ultramarine blue, sap green, phthalo green, vivid lime green, crimson, dioxazane purple, light Hansa yellow, and yellow azo medium. We also have a cup of water and we have some brushes today. We're going to be using flat tip brushes and a liner brush to get that little pin flag on the putting green. To get started, I'm gonna use my number six filbert brush and just sketch out the concept. I'm gonna dip the brush in the water slightly and use some ultramarine blue. Just put a little pin, a little dab there where the center, general center point is on this canvas so you guys can tell. Uh, and then I'm gonna start with, first we have, Gonna start down here on this one. So we've got a little lip, we've got some water in here, and then just below center, we've got a nice little uh, point between the water and the grass right above it, above it, and there's a little like shadow there. That shadow is reflecting, a little bit smaller in the reflection, a little line above that. Then we have reflections of trees everywhere else in the water and some sky. A little bit of bunker reflecting over here. Then we're gonna next go for the tree line behind the putting green. And if you're looking at this section we just put in with the bit of grass here and the reflection of that grass. It's about that same size, maybe slightly bigger. So it takes us to about right here. And it's in general, it's a flat line. It's not, it's a little wavy, but maybe dips down slightly over here. So that's basically where our tree line is. Now that I know where that is, I can put my putting green, which is on a little bit of a slope here and it comes to about, about right here, so halfway between left and right. Got the end of the putting green. Comes up a little here, and then dips back down. Okay, and then we've got our tree line. Um, there is a little bit, you can see a hole behind the tree line here, so I'm gonna Put that in there. We've also got some landscaping in this tree line area as well. We'll get to that later. Uh, so there's that next. This is behind the tree line. So this line's where our trees are going to be in the center part of the painting. And then this is like, you can see a little bit of this through it. And then there's another far distance tree line. Starts up here, kind of comes down like this and then it kind of gets lost over here. Uh, so that helps us to see where the sky is gonna be. And then same thing down here, I wanna put a little mark for the sky. There's also some sky visible. This is like that farther tree line reflecting down here. And for now, I'm just gonna pretend like all of these trees that are here are not really there because we're gonna layer over, we're gonna do the sky first, let that dry, and then layer this tree line over that. So we're gonna start with the sky. Yeah, I'll use this uh, number 14 flat tip brush, why not? We're gonna blend some brilliant blue and phthalo blue and ultramarine blue. Starting up at the top, go back and forth with your brush. 
can blend in more white, a little more ultramarine. Just make sure you're not leaving any white space on the canvas. You want to fill that in really well. And you can just take just some pure white with a little bit of phthalo green. And put that right here. Let that blend up. Let's go back and forth with the brush. Get nice smooth coverage. And let's add some little clouds while we're here. Just really quick, loose clouds. Okay, and then we'll take blue, ultramarine blue, phthalo blue, a little dioxazine purple, brilliant blue, phthalo blue, a little bit of brown. We want this blue to be darker in value than what we have up top because it's the reflection's a little darker. Can mix more brilliant, brilliant blue in there. So we're just trying to get this reflection all covered in, blocked in here. Can use a little more white. And then if you want to get that reflection of the clouds, they are going this way here, so they're going to go this way and the reflection. Maybe a little more phthalo green down here. Let's blend that in nicely. All right, that looks good. Now I'm going to take sap green and my Indian yellow and my oxide color, a little yellow azo, some white, and some phthalo green. And I'm just going to paint the bottom here. Let's get this nice little line where we have some grass. Just covering that up because it came to my attention. Just wanted to get that in there. Okay. Next, let's work on the tree line in that far distance. So we're going to mix white with some purple and some brilliant blue more phthalo blue, maybe a hint of crimson in there. That's a nice color and we'll just use this just kind of quickly like a lot of this is going to get covered up so you don't want to spend too much time on this background tree line. Just make sure you got the white space covered you can just quickly kind of push the larger brush around to get give like a general look of leaves and branches but nothing too detailed and you can add a little more phthalo or ultramarine and purple for the area the base of that tree line even darker over here. More umber. All right. And we're going to leave that like it is. It's going to block in a little bit more sap green over here too. Let this 
dry a little bit more. All right, and then let's work on that same thing in the reflection. We'll take a little bit more of our blue, ultramarine blue. Start adding that reflection down here. Going with the fuzzy brush strokes just to make it look like we've got the trees there. If your blue is still wet down here, you can even do a little like blending like this so it kind of fuzzes out even more like a windy reflection would. Darkening up over here again. A little more umber in here and sap green on this side. All right. I'm just gonna get the extra paint off my brush and put in the fairway in the background. So I'm mixing my vivid lime green with some of my phthalo green and my yellow and a little purple and some white. And this one we're just gonna go like this, go right over that line like where you left some space. Get a nice tree line in there, go fresh right up to where the trees are. All right, looks good. And we've got a shadowy section in here. I'm gonna mix some purple with my phthalo green and phthalo blue. Just add this little shadow that's in here from the trees. And there's a little shadow, uh, oops, it's up here. All right, looks nice. I'm gonna lighten up that area back there. Just mixing white with vivid lime green and yellow Hansa. Just brightening it up a little. Looks nice. And then we're going to use a little more phthalo green, yellow, and white. Indian yellow, sap green, phthalo green, yellow, orchard pink, and phthalo green. Hint of crimson. A lot of phthalo. That's what I mean. All right, and this color is going to go here. And then we're gonna mix in some more sap green and phthalo green and some purple and some phthalo blue. And that's gonna be this color. And you wanna put this down while right after you put down that first green right above it so that you can kind of blend the connection point like this. You just very lightly press and it gives you that nice soft transition from like where the highlight is to where the shadow is. And if you want to come back, we're going to add a little highlight on there. It's going to take some white, the yellow, vivid lime green, and then to just add this little highlight in there. Kind of helps. And you can Close that out. Okay, 
go back to this color. Let's add a little more sap green and ultramarine blue for down here. I want to be just a little darker. So you can still tell there's a difference there. I'm going to go back with my lighter green that we have right above that. Kind of blend that up into the shadow color and then go back with that shadow color a little more. Just got a little more ultramarine blue on there. You can do a little more phthalo. There we go, that looks nice. And I'm gonna put this big brush down, go back to my number six filbert brush. And we're gonna add the bunker here. So we want some white with a little bit of portrait pink. We need a teeny touch of this blue, teeny touch of the oxide color. You don't want it to be pure white. Uh, teeny bit more of that oxide color. There we go, that looks good. And then this just goes right above, goes right to the center of the canvas if we're looking left to right. And then the white goes right there. Comes down a little bit. And then next, I want to take some yellow, Indian yellow with my oxide, some red portrait pink, and some cadmium, or some yellow azo. Maybe a little umber in there too. And that's a nice color for the landscaping that we see. Going to mix a little purple in there for this one in the background. Starts about here. This goes right in there. I don't want to stand out too much, so I'm going to blend a little bit of umber. Darken it down, cool it down a little. Maybe go with a little bit more of that background color. Okay, now that's kind of pushed back into the distance a little more. And we can add this one up here. Just a little bit there. Really thin line. It's a little thicker right here. Mix a little more umber in here. And then we'll go back to our nice greens we're working with. That was way too much phthalo. Yeah, that's good. All right, mix some of my yellow oxide, yellow Hansa, yellow medium. Some white and let's get a little more sap green in there and we can come back to getting this green for the fairway area behind the putting green this kind of connects through there Then there's this little narrow 
bit of grass you can see on the other side of the bunker. Comes down. And this comes up. Got that bunker looking good. And then for the putting green, we need more yellow, our oxide color, some more white, and we'll do some more of our Indian yellow. That's a pretty good color. I'm just going to mix a little white here for this rim area. There, looks nice. Can add some more white, our yellows, do Hansa. sap green. There's a bit of a lip here that's got a little shadow. Gotta get this shape right. Looks good. It's going back down here and brightening that up. Gonna brighten this up again. And here you can just kind of go back and forth with the brush. Let it blend a little bit. And take just some yellow and some of your vivid lime green. Those colors are more on the translucent side, so it's just going to warm up the color. We're going to get a nice little border around the bunker. And then we need a line for where the water meets the land. So we're going to mix our sap green with burnt sienna and umber and just put this right here very lightly pressing here just to get this line across and then you can just take pure umber in some spots there's a little umber showing Add more ultramarine if you want to darken things again. Just trying to show like a little bit of texture here where the grasses are more rough. Okay. And maybe a little bit more. Just touch up this part of the bunker. Okay, now let's add 
a little bit of highlights to the trees in the back. We're just going to mix some purple in with our thalo. Some portrait pink, some Hansa and white. A little lime green. And just add some quick little brush marks. Just like this, that make it look like we've got some trees sticking out in here. Can mix a little more phthalo green in there for some of these. And I can do the same thing down here. Whoops, let's make it a little darker. Let's make some brush marks that subtly indicate that there are trees, little highlights and stuff. Okay, and then let's take the liner brush I'm going to use this big liner brush, just says zero. Uh, we'll use that and we'll put in some stems or some tree trunks. I'm going to dip that in water, take some white, some umber, and some ultramarine blue. Just going to start with that color. It's a nice shadowy color for our tree trunk. And we're going to start with, none of them really go up like to the very top, so that's good to know. I'll stop about there. And they don't go perfectly straight. Some of them have a little bit of an angle. And for me, it just helps to get the trunk first so I know where to put the branches. Need to mix some more colors. We've got a lot here. They don't have to all be perfect. Got a couple back in there too. Lots and lots of tree trunks. And then if you want it to be like perfectly accurate, you can make sure you have a tree trunk everywhere, like perfectly parallel coming down from where you 
put them here. I'm just going to focus on the big ones and then the rest of them we're just going to do a bunch of little tick marks. So we're going to take some sap green, Indian yellow, crimson, just start with that, get a nice blend, and just start by adding these little brush marks, little dabs. These are all cypress trees, so they have a lot of gaps, spaces in between the branches. Lots of sky visible through them. If you would like to make your painting super detailed, you can go in with a liner brush for all of these little branches. I'm trying to focus a little more on light and color and the basics to tell the story of what we're looking at and make it exciting and beautiful, um, but not go too crazy with the details. And when you do the reflection, you just want to mix in some blue, some phthalo blue, ultramarine blue, and crimson. And then same thing, just add the reflection. Doesn't have to be totally perfect replica, but try to get it kind of close and that'll make enough sense. Like for example, this is higher than this, so this should be a little higher than this, or a little lower than this, I guess. <laughs> That's what I mean. back up. And hold the brush in different angles to get different brush strokes. If you want more full coverage, you just kind of dab it. If you want a little bit more of a controlled brush mark, then you can hold it at an angle like that. Usually start with the angles closer to the top and then just do a little bit more of the dabbing to get some full coverage as we get farther down on the trees. It's 
Just mix in a little bit of my Indian yellow in there. And then down here, let's take a little more Indian yellow and just add a few trees I see, or bushes I see down here. I've got one there, a little one here, a little one here, a little one right there, right there. Mixing in some ultramarine, maybe a little bit of umber, phthalo. Crimson, sap green too, and we want the darker versions of all these. Doesn't have to be perfect. Mixing a little more umber and sap green in here because it looks a little more warm. Okay, getting that reflection in there. I'm gonna take more umber, mix it in with this shadow color, and maybe a little, a little more of my blues too. And we're gonna build up some darker shadows that we've got in here. Mix a little bit of brilliant blue in there too, why not? A little bit of that in this side of the tree. There's another one back there. And then we want all of that in the reflection, really dark. And I'm going to take a little more umber for some shadows over here I want to build up. Make sure I get those down here too. Let's make a couple of these a little darker so we build a little depth up. Okay. Good. And then we're going to do some highlights on all these trees. So we're going to take our Indian yellow with some sap green and some white. And we'll 
I'll do a little crimson. And I'm going to take a teeny bit of phthalo green just to cool that down a bit. And then I'm going to add a little more white. <laughs> now it's a highlight. There we go. Remember if you're using acrylic paint that it tends to dry a little bit darker than what it looks like when you put it down wet. So something you got to think about if you're putting down some highlights and the color looks like it's just a little bit lighter than the color you already have down, you might want to lighten that up by adding a little more white or some warmer, brighter colors to it because it's going to dry a little bit darker. All right, I'm mixing a little bit of Hansa in with my white for some bright highlights on these trees down here. These are kind of blending in with the shadows I put down, which is okay. All right, back to this color. Just working on everything up here first because the highlight color is going to be different in the shadow, in like the reflection. It makes a little more phthalo green and crimson for right here. Brighten that up a little. Up top. You don't want your highlights to completely cover all of the shadows that you put down. That base color. Make sure you leave some space for that. That helps to build your depth in your tree and keeps it from looking flat. I'm gonna mix a little vivid lime green, a little more white, a lot more white. Got some really bright highlights on this one. Holding the brush at different angles to get those lines. Take a little more phthalo green, white. Build up some highlights in this area. color and a little bit of sap green you can add some like mini highlights in the background there you want to use a variety of color here you don't want to just use one color for every tree's highlights or they're going to all blend in and not stand out from one another we don't want that definitely want things to stand out a little bit And if you have like a big clump of highlights, like there's just too much, it's too bright, then just go back in with your brush and add a couple more little shadows in there. There's a little too much highlight there. Looks like a good balance now. Want to add these shadows back in, just darken this area up a little more. A little bit more of a highlight on there. Okay, that's looking nice. Then I want to brighten up these highlights again. And we can add another highlight on top of some of these first ones we put down just by adding a little more white. 
and you want these to be even smaller, take up even less space than the other highlights did. Just make sure it's definitely like another level of value lighter than what you had down. If you want to highlight on top of the highlight to really build the depth. I'm going to mix some oxide in there. Brighten up a few of these. Some more. More crimson and phthalo green. And that's a good highlight color for down here. And you're going to do the same thing you just did on the highlights up top. We're going to have a little less variety in our color down here than we had just mixing in some white and some sap green and some portrait pink. Uh, for this one and just try to do a mirror image of what you had for your brush a little more of our sap green Mixed with the crimson color in here. And then once you get that down, if you just like go over this really quickly back and forth, it'll give that like smeared look, which makes it look a little bit more like it's just a reflection in the water. And that's helpful to keep it realistic. You can even like push the brush back and forth, or you if you want it to look really fluid, you can make these lines like there's a bit of wind kind of carrying your water you can take your brilliant blue ultramarine and phthalo blue white and you can even do like a couple little lines like this through the that to make it look more like water. Helps to do that a little bit right here too, just a little highlight. Brighten up that highlight again. here. It's going to dip this in the water so it's not too much. That looks good. Nice um, tree trunks. So I mixed some portrait pink right in where they had that shadowy color for the trunk. So there's a little bit of purple in there already. 
It's mixing a little portrait pink in there with some white. That's a nice starting color. And now we get to go over everywhere we had our tree trunks with the highlight. Add one back there, add one there. This is probably the trickiest part, because if you make a mistake here, you're just going to have to let it dry and then paint over it. So now you know where to leave some voids, where you have like some clusters of tree visible. So mix a little more white and just add a few more a little ultramarine too add a few more like in the distance in the back here really thin little tree line marks okay and then for down here I'm going to mix more umber and I'll mix a little more Oxide, a hint of crimson, and then same thing, you want to try to kind of copy to get a nice reflection of where you had these lines. It's not going to be perfect. Copying the reflections is one of the more time consuming parts just because you want it to read accurately, you want things to kind of match up at least. nice. I'm going to go back in with some more shadows with our doxazine purple, umber, and ultramarine blue. Hint of our crimson as well. Just going into some select trees, adding more shadows in some spots. I'm just going to use the same color for the ones down here 
If you can blend it a little, that helps too. We'll make it a little more realistic. It's blending a little less intense color for the shadows here. And we've got some more ultramarine. For a few of them, I'm going to add back here just a couple lines. Come back to this darker brown color. I'm just going to go one more round of touching up the um, branches in front of the tree trunks. So I'm going back to my white with some sap green and some crimson, and a little more white, and just touching up, covering up some branch marks, you can add more shadows, just wherever you don't want to have like too many branches. back over here and darken this up down here again all right that's looking nice and the last thing I need to do two more things I need to touch up this grass down here so I'm going to take my sap green and my Halo green and my Indian yellow and my vivid lime green and just add some highlights going back and forth with the brush. I want to look a little fuzzy like we've got some rough grass here. So I'm just pushing the paint around. I'm going to take just some Thalo blue with sap green, add a little more shadow in there. Then we can add more highlights, some white, just to help separate the water so we know this is land that's water we want this to be brighter I want to use this same color over here just to show this highlight off again. A little more white. And then brighten this up one more time. And we 
can just put it right here. go and then the reflection is just gonna have like a little umber a little bit of blue in it just a little more muted looking then you want to be straight down blues whites do one more round of adding a couple little water reflection marks here All right, that helps just make the water look like there's a little bit of wind blowing on it. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of a shadow on these ones. All right guys, that is our finished painting. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have recommendations for future painting tutorials, you can leave a comment under this video. Thanks for watching, have a great day, and happy painting. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.